Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Nicoa Dunn, a certified lifestyle coach. Today we're going to talk about a serious issue. It's an experience that I've had in the workplace and many women still are having it today. It's called sexism. Let's talk about sexism. I recently read an article in Forbes magazine that talked about subtle sexism. And first and foremost, I want to say, listen, number one, if you are experiencing overt sexism in your workplace or anywhere that you frequent, then you need to report it. It's unacceptable, it's serious, and you should not ignore it. It's okay to tell the truth to someone who can support you and make sure that whoever the individual is that has done this to you is dealt with appropriately. So let's just get that out of the way. Sexism is unacceptable, inappropriate behavior in the workplace is unacceptable, and if you're experiencing anything like that, you need to go talk to your human resources manager or to your boss, okay? Now let's talk about that subtle sexism. I can remember being in the corporate world. I was in a meeting, and these, it was myself and two men. Now, I was often the only female in the room. I was active in the corporate world back in the 90s and early 2000s, and that wasn't uncommon. And the higher up I got in the organization, the less likely there were other women. Having said that, that is changing, but I'll remember a few examples. Once I was in this three-person meeting, we were referring to an employee issue, and one of my colleagues cussed. He said the <clears throat> F word. And he turned to me and apologized. And I looked at him like, what? And I said, you know, I've heard the F word before. And he was like, oh, yeah, sorry. And then he continued on with the meeting. Now, what was happening there is that he was actually separating me from the group. By turning to me and apologizing, I mean, why would he do that? He didn't apologize to the guy sitting next to him, but he turned to me. It could have been one of two reasons. One, I am the human resources manager, so people are sensitive about what the HR person might be thinking. Perhaps that was inappropriate in the workplace to use foul language, obviously. Having said that, I think it had more to do with the fact that I was a woman because I have found this to be an experience I've seen many, many times where something is done off color or maybe even at the expense of a female and then the man will turn and apologize or see, look to see my reaction. In that moment, this is a tip for you, I chose to go with the flow without making an issue out of it. But I did feel it. And my decision to respond with, I've heard the F word before, I tried to put myself back on the same level with both of my colleagues. Maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. My advice to you, however, is you need to hold these individuals around you accountable and you can do it in a very calm and appropriate way. So first of all, find an opportunity to speak your truth. Me playing along in that scenario was my truth. Hey, why are you looking at me? I've heard the F word before. Let's move on. Let's get the work done. That was a choice to engage and kind of call him out. Now, did I, after the fact, go back to him and say, hey, man, why did you do that? No, I didn't. But you can speak your truth and find ways to push back when you see subtle sexism occurring in your work environment. Let me give you an example that you may have run into in your past. I had a client the other day who shared with me they were in a meeting. There were probably a dozen people in the room. And the leader, the president of their company, started making jokes, inappropriate jokes. And those jokes were about females and their body parts. I'll just leave it at that. Unfortunately, it made everybody uncomfortable, men and women alike. And my client was a male in the room and said, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to stop him. What in the world was I supposed to say? He's the president of the company. Are you kidding me, Nicoa? How in the world could I have handled that? Because I ultimately said nothing and felt bad about it. 
So let's talk about what he could have done in that situation. First of all, depending on your confidence level and the dynamic and energy of the meeting, you could push back. You could say to your boss, hey man, let's not make those jokes. That's inappropriate. Let's move on. Let's get back to the meeting. If you felt like you could. Sometimes that's just a little bit too scary for people. I've done it before, but I was human resources and I had a bit of a feeling that I could get away with the pushback. So I might say, hey, that's enough of that. No more jokes. Let's move on. Now the let's move on approach is the second way you might deal with a situation like that. Bringing the topic of the meeting back into focus. The boss has given these jokes and in this case, he literally was pulling up Comedy Central examples of inappropriate joking and comedy skits. Talk about pressure and awkward and weird. My client was completely uncomfortable. Having said that, one of his colleagues, a female, tried to bring the, the focus back onto the topic at hand. Then someone else attempted. And in this case, it still didn't work. But bringing the focus back to the objectives of the meeting is an excellent way to defer, get back to what really matters most, and not give energy and attention to the joke. What's really important is to not laugh and to not engage. And you should avert eye contact because if there's any resemblance of agreement, support, or same energy, as if you also think that's funny, yeah, no. That will never go down well with your relationships with your colleagues. You may think you need to do that, and you may be nervous and feel a little out of, out of sorts and laugh, but you really need to check yourself because if you laugh along with the boss, everybody's going to think you're also agreeing and think in the same way. Last but not least, if in fact it's not appropriate to deal with it in the meeting, my client and I talked a lot about how after the fact he might have been able to go to his boss to give feedback. And at the end of our call, he decided that he would. And what we role played is the ability to say, you know what, everybody really likes working with you and you are really funny. And sometimes your uh, enthusiasm and jokes, you may not realize it, could come across as offensive and it sometimes crosses a line, and I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. I know it's not your intention. You have to give the individual the benefit of the doubt in order to not offend and, and get them on the defensive. So you need to validate their strength first. Let them know, say, hey, man, you know, we really love working with you. Uh, sometimes you really make us laugh, but the example the other day was actually maybe a little bit too far. I bet you didn't even recognize it, uh, but I wanted to give you that feedback and it could be considered offensive. So he actually went back and had that conversation. Whether or not the individual takes the feedback and is able to really apply a different approach to his leadership or not is to be determined. But you can't say that you didn't give him the feedback. And last but not least, we need to remember something pretty important about individuals. As Maya Angelou said, if they knew better, they would do better. When people do not behave appropriately, you must understand that they did not know any better and that with time and education, hopefully they can see themselves better and they can show up more appropriately. I, I have a question for everybody. When we talk about sexism, I want you to step way back and I want you to think about things like where we use pronouns in the way we write, when we tell a story. I want you to think about things like the fact that all of these AI support tools that we have, Siri, Alexis, Contana, they're all females. How are these choices in technology actually suppressing women? I listened to a podcast this morning and the guy was talking about stereos and speakers and at the end of it I noticed in reflection that he kept talking about how ballsy the speakers were and I joked with my partner and said wouldn't that be hilarious if he said 
Man, the ovaries on that speaker were awesome. You guys, really, how are you influencing the way you communicate, the way your organization writes marketing materials, the way your technology work is actually choosing gender identification? And with the number of pronouns that are out there now, are we really being sensitive? Thanks for watching. I'm Nicoa Dunn. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also check out NicoaDunn.com. You can get a subscription to emails and free tools to help you live a life by design.